Oh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. This is going to be fun. I appreciate all of you registering. Uh, I see some some TRG folks as well as quite a few non-TRG. And uh, actually, most of the registrants this morning were non-TRG, which is cool. So we'll get some some new fresh faces in here. And uh, you know, we'll go ahead and start talking about some fun stuff. So this is a preview of uh, what we're referring to as just you know what it says on the tin stop trading manually because uh, that's what this is all about this is all about the potential of automation and what you can do uh, frankly out of the box with Sierra chart which I, I think a lot of people don't realize the true power of what Sierra chart can do just you know as it comes completely bone stock uh, so of course this is being sponsored by trading research group TRG and I am the community manager of TRG uh, and you know I'll let you figure out which one of those two is me in the picture, uh, but uh, I'm the one with the bad eyesight, so put it that way. Um, you know, Jonathan Van Kloot, that's my name. Most of the people call me JVC, uh, certainly in TRG, because it's a lot shorter to type. That's the reason I uh, settled on that. It's, it's just darn easier and faster for people to type to reach me. So um, for today, we are going to be doing some stuff. Uh, what is that? What are we going to be doing? Well, we're going to be discussing some things, <clears throat> excuse me, some things. Specifically, we are going to start off with why automate in the first place. What's the point to that? Uh, we're going to talk about, and this is, probably seems a little strange for a presentation like this, but we're going to talk about why typical TA systems always lose money uh, because they do. Eventually, they will always lose. Uh, and that's a, actually an important thing to understand uh, with regards to what we're going to be doing in this course. Uh, we're going to talk about why you're, the way you think about automation. It really matters. Uh, in fact, it, it, it's everything. Uh, everything starts from thinking appropriately and properly when you first set out to automate something. And we're going to go over that. Uh, we're going to talk about how there are multiple different ways to automate in Sierra Chart. And no, you don't have to code. Uh, you know, I think most people think, at least I certainly see this out in, in you know, the, the internet bill uh, that people think coding means, you know, programming languages, C++ or, you know, things of that nature or Java or whatever. And, you know, it does not have to mean that at all. Um, I'm also going to try to sell you something. Hopefully it won't really need much of a sell. Uh, it's not going to be any kind of hard sell or anything like that, but I'm just going to show you how you can watch me build six and it's actually 12 because there's going to be two versions of each bot, a high frequency and a low frequency version. Uh, it's, you know, simple, but totally complete and fully automated bots, uh, you know, trading systems, setups, whatever you want to call them. Um, but most importantly, you're going to see how you will come away with the complete framework of the bot that you can just reuse and repurpose forever. Uh, you will always have it. You just drop it in and bam, you will have a new bot up and running in no time at all. Uh, specifically, what we're going to be building in this course and what we're going to be talking about building is first, uh, as I mentioned, a low and a high frequency version of each one of these. We're going to start with a moving average, move, bleh, can't speak today, moving average crossover bot, uh, mostly because the moving averages are pretty familiar to people. And it's a nice, gentle way to start out with automating stuff. Uh, then we're going to move on to a range trading bot. I'm going to show how you can define time-based ranges, and then you can fade them, you can go with them, you can trade the breakout, you can do a lot of different things. But uh, you know, we're going to we're going to add a concept to the uh, to the first lesson. Each one of these adds something on top of the prior session. That's the way I've structured this course. Uh, and we're going to move on to building a mean reversion bot. And of course, mean reversion is the um, frankly, mistaken idea that, oh, if a market is too too extreme in one direction or the other, it is absolutely always going to revert to the average. It's going to revert to the mean. And um, yeah, big hint for you, that doesn't happen. Um, the mean converges on price. And if you don't understand what that means, sit tight, uh, we'll get into this. But it's uh, really, really important to understand. Um, we're also going to do a TTM squeeze bot, just because I know TTM squeeze has been around for for a long time, but it's still quite popular in the, the TA world. So we're gonna we're gonna show how you can automate that in Sierra Chart. And we're gonna move on to a Camarillo, 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 Camarillo. I never know how you're supposed to say that, but a pivots bot. Because uh, I know pivots are also still really popular. They've been around forever, uh, but they are still quite popular and are extensively used in the uh, retail TA trading world. So we're gonna build a bot to to trade them. 
And then lastly, we're going to finish up with a divergence bot. And we're going to do volume divergence just because volume divergence is easy to understand and, and you know, easy to put together and see visually. But it could be in anything divergence. You're going to really be building a, a divergence bot and feed it whatever things you want. That's a, a key thing to understand here is with the framework we're going to be building. Yes, you're going to be building these bots with these specific indicators generating the signals. But you can plug in whatever the heck you want to plug in. This is completely unrestricted and unlimited. You will be able to make it trade anything you feel like. All right, real quick, a little about TRG. Uh, if you aren't familiar with TRG, and you know, most of you probably are, most of you probably came from our Facebook group or or our socials, things like that, and have been through, uh, you know, either in passing or even maybe you dropped in for a month here or there. Uh, but you know, TRG, in my opinion, is really like the serious place for futures traders. Um, it is a, a no furu zone. And if you aren't familiar with the term furu, uh, it's just fake guru. Uh, and we, we've all encountered our share of those uh, in, in the trading education space. I know. Oh, boy, I don't even like to think about the amount of money I've spent over the last 20 years on BS trading education garbage that uh, was just either super outdated or fundamentally flawed and fundamentally wrong in the first place. Um, so TRG is a place for serious people. We take it really, really seriously. This is a profession. It's a really difficult profession, and it takes a lot of work to achieve anything even remotely resembling success or consistency or anything like that. So we're all here to work really hard at it. Um, it is an order flow focused group. Uh, so I'm not going to be talking about order flow here today specifically. And during this course, this is not a course about order flow, um, but order flow is really, really important. And if you don't already know about order flow or understand it, I cannot recommend strongly enough that you you learn about it because it's what makes the markets move. Without order flow, the markets would flatline. They, they couldn't go anywhere by definition. Order flow is what makes the markets move. It's really worth understanding. Uh, in TRG, we've got live classes just about every single trading day. We also have an absolutely mahusive library of clinics, workshops, boot camps, roundtables, tons more live trading, just endless live trading, so many different sessions on things, uh, sessions on platforms, Sierra Chart, Jigsaw, you name it. Uh, we've got stuff going back to 2019. We actually, TRG was founded around the time COVID or just slightly before COVID hit. So we've actually got stuff recorded of sessions from back when COVID was first hitting. And that was a crazy wild time. And it's kind of cool to have that sort of time capsuled. Um, it, it was it was a really bizarre time in the markets, you know, limit ups, limit downs, craziness. So it's it's fun to have that on record. Uh, TRG was founded by Jeff Mam. He is a 50, 50 plus actually years derivatives trader uh, and also a long standing career in training, um, both trading, training and corporate training. So, you know, as well as college training. So a lot of background in training and education. And his partner, Lee Harris, uh, about 30 years or so trading started in the 90s. And he's also a very crack software developer, a trainer as well himself, and an ex-prop trader. And in Lee's case, when I when I say ex-prop trader, I don't mean you know Lilu, Apex, Top Step. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are not prop firms, and that's not prop trading. I'm talking about a you know get on the train every morning at at the butt crack of dawn and go out to the the firm and sit in a room full of other traders at a desk and trade eight hours a day and then get back on the train and go home, you know, like an actual job job as a trader. All right, the real quick TLDR about me, uh, I discovered options actually was the first thing I started with, which was probably a mistake in hindsight, but um, you know, equity and index options, 99-ish, 98 to 2000, somewhere in there, uh, right around 99 or so. And after that, I was in and out of the markets, blowing up my accounts uh, for 15 or more. Well, more actually, it's definitively more years. Uh, there were no sims. Um, you know, when I when I started out, there were no good sims. Uh, there were no evaluation companies. There was uh, there were no micros even. Uh, you know, you, you had no choice but to trade real money. And uh, yeah, you could paper trade, you know, like literally write stuff down on paper, but. It, Paper trading is interesting just to kind of track behaviors, but it's not going to teach you anything about how to trade uh, it is useless for that. So I discovered futures and was introduced to them actually in around mid 2018, summer 2018. And, uh, they were not what I thought. They totally blew my mind when I realized what futures actually were. Um, but I struggled with them. And then I discovered order flow actually towards the end of 2019. And I found it, I, I stumbled onto it myself, which is completely by accident and thought, 
like, oh my God, this is it. This is this is the supply and demand of the market. And I understood that the markets were driven by supply and demand. That's a given. I, I got that. Um, but I didn't think it was something you could see in real time. And so when I found out that order flow was a thing, I, I immediately thought, that's it. I'm done. Nirvana. I found it. Uh, you know, it, this is the thing. Um, of course, it's not that simple. <laughs> Nothing is quite intuitive and things don't always behave the way you think they should intuitively when you first encounter order flow. A lot of things are actually quite backwards because you got to think about the other side of the trade. You got to think about the passive traders, all this kind of stuff. So um, fortunately, I stumbled into TRG uh, March of 2020 and uh, never left. As soon as I, I came into TRG, I realized this is the place. Uh, these people are really, really serious. This is not fluff. This is uh, you know, the people who are devoted to this. And so, uh, you know, I stuck around. I got really super involved in the community. Uh, it was just, you know, this was my full time thing. I put all my time and energy into this. And uh, that made me the community manager. Um, they offered me the community manager role officially in 2021, uh, in January. And I said, yeah, absolutely. I took it. And I have been the official community manager ever since. I also handle all the video production. I have a, a background, actually, in video production. I used to do that for my living. I, I owned a post-production company, and and that was my living, was a video editor for most of the 90s and early 2000s. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm community manager, handle the library, handle the videos, uh, and help out just kind of with whatever needs helping out around TRG. All right. So um, on that note, Lee is actually here and I'm going to uh, ask Lee to help me out. And we're going to kind of switch roles today. Usually I'm his helper uh, on sessions or I'm Jeff's helper on his sessions. But uh, today I would like Lee to keep track of the chat. I'm going to not really pay attention to the chat so I can just kind of get through this presentation reasonably quickly. Uh, it's very easy for me to just kind of riff on this stuff forever. I could talk all day on on these things because it's just it's a passion of mine. Uh, and I don't want to do that. I want to stick to the planned presentation here so I can get you guys out. Um, but Lee, if there are anything, if anything comes up in the chat while I'm going that is you know, really should be addressed right now, please, by all means, jump in, interrupt me and um, I will speak to it. Otherwise, I'm going to take questions at the end um, and I will then just sit down and go through the chat. So. Feel free. Any questions you have, obviously, throw them in the chat and we will definitely address them. All right. So first things first, if you're new to Sierra, like really, truly new, um, it is definitely a little bit scary. Uh, people are always talking about Sierra chart has this brutal learning curve. Uh, and, you know, there's some truth to that. It's not the most intuitive program in the world. They do a lot of things kind of their own way. They don't like to follow conventions and they don't always do stuff in the way other programs you're used to um, might do things. So it can feel very daunting. Um, fortunately, there's a lot of good resources out there to help get you going. And these are some of the ones that I would strongly recommend you check out uh, if you are newer to Sierra Chart. Um, let me actually copy and paste those. Where'd you go? I lost track of the... Where did that... There it is. My links. I had them over here ready to go and I lost track of them. There they are. All right. Let me just copy and paste these into the chat real quick to help make it easy on you. So... Uh, whoops. Did I get all three? I missed something. What did I miss? Um, I missed... Oh, I missed the uh, this one. Hang on. Missed the YouTube. There we go. All right. So the first one is the fast track guide from Frederick over at Simple System Trading. And it's free. It's a free PDF. And it's just a really good uh, you know, introduction to Sierra. Get you started from kind of zero on the basics. Um, it's good for that. The second thing is a YouTube playlist that is actually pretty current. There's a lot of really old stuff on YouTube about Sierra chart. Like, going back 10 plus years. A lot of it's really super outdated, but this one was actually pretty recent, pretty current. Um, and again, it's it'll be good to kind of get you up to speed on a lot of the basics if you're if you're not real familiar with Sierra or you could use some help getting going on that. The last one is not free, but is really excellent. Uh, it is a, a guide, a Sierra chart handbook uh, by a guy named, by the, he goes by the name of Ziggy. Ziggy's on the bid, I believe is his Twitter handle. A uh, really cool uh, Twitter user shares a lot of really good, useful information on Sierra chart. It's like 40 bucks and really, really well put together. Um, I, you know, I didn't need it myself, so I didn't buy it, but I spoke to a number of people who have, and they've all said the same thing. Like, this is really, really good. And obviously I've, I've looked at his preview of it and stuff like that. And yeah, it does look really good. So if you're a beginner, strongly recommend you check any of these resources out and uh, they will help to get you where you want to be. All right. So on that note, Let's talk about why you should want to automate in the first place, um, which seems so obvious to me, but you know, not everybody actually gets the real reasons to automate. They aren't always what people think. Um, the first and probably most obvious one is just plain automations fast. 
Um, compared to me, the human, you know, my automated system, my automated bot can figure out that there's something to look at, look at it, assess it, pick it apart, analyze it, do the math on it, determine whether it's a, a valid setup or not, take the trade and potentially exit the trade with a profit before I, the human, even realize there's anything to look at. Um, like literally trades can happen in milliseconds and I would never even have known it was there. So that's definitely it's kind of the top of the list reason to automate, but it's not at all the only reason by any means. Human beings have tendencies to do things like getting tired or we get bored or frustrated uh, and frustration frequently leads to tilt, revenge trading, all of that stuff. Uh, we're emotional. We're emotional beings. Uh, bots obviously don't suffer from any of this. They are just always going to do what they've been told to do, which means they are extremely consistent. A bot will trade the same setup the same way every time. It's not going to suddenly decide to get creative and try something different. It's not going to be in a mood. It's it's not going to not going to just plain do something dumb. It's not going to have a fat finger. It's not going to do any of these things. It's just going to consistently do what it's been told to do. Now, of course, that does mean you have to have told it to do the right thing. That's another problem. You, you need to actually know that you've instructed it correctly. But provided that you have, it's going to be nice and consistent. It is a much better use of our human gray matter to do things like designing, building, and optimizing. This is the stuff that machines are just not that good at. Yes, theoretically, it is possible there are machine learning algorithms and things like that that do feed their experiences back into the, the machine and learn from it and, and these kinds of things. Yeah, that, that technically exists. But that's a completely different world from what we're going to be talking about or looking at here. Um, and I think the highest and best use of our brains is to focus on figuring out Finding edges, first of all, figuring out where do I have an edge, what's the poten potential for an edge, and then designing and building bots to capture that edge, and then testing that edge, optimizing it until you feel comfortable that, okay, this is an edge I can deploy in real markets, uh, and then just repeat and, and do that again for other setups. You also can have fun with automation in ways that you know, fun can be really dangerous in trading. Um, there's a saying that we we use a lot in TRG, and I'm sure it's outside of TRG as well, but it's good trading is boring. Um, and it really should be. If you're trading for the emotional roller coaster, the thrills, right? That That's casino mindset. And that's really, really dangerous. Um, and it's dangerous in both directions. You can make really bad decisions because you've had a losing streak. And so you get frustrated and angry and want to revenge trade to get it back and all of that stuff. But you can have just as big a problem if you're on a winning streak because you can get euphoric and think, oh my God, this is it. I can't lose. I'm going to go big. I'm, I'm on a roll and, and all that nonsense. And, and that is really dangerous. But it is extremely fun, in my opinion. This is just my definition of fun, maybe. But it's really fun and extremely satisfying to watch automation run and do what you've designed it to do and do it correctly and do it well. That is really cool. Um, and watching your bot just sit there and do its thing, you can get as excited about that as you want. You can be you know, bouncing off the walls, shouting from the rooftops how awesome this is. It's not going to impact the trading at all because you are not pushing the buttons. You are not making the decisions. So there's no worries at all of your emotional state um, if the automation is doing the work causing a problem. And that's really, really useful. Um, you also don't have to full automate. A lot of people assume automation means autopilot. You just turn the thing on in the morning and walk away. You know, go go to the beach and let your machine trade for you. Um, and while, yeah, that is possible. You can do that. It doesn't have to be that way. You can do partial automation. This is actually a very popular thing to do, where maybe you, the trader, maybe your entries uh, rely on a certain bit of subjectivity or a certain feel or a certain understanding of the context of the market or the energy of things or you know that kind of stuff. That's fine. Maybe you, the trader, enter the trade. But once the trade is on, you don't, you know, maybe you have a bad habit of moving your stops and tightening your, you know, targets and like, oh, I'll just take it now and not following the plan and all that kind of thing. You can let the computer do that part for you. So you enter and then it handles the trade from there. You can go the other way around too. Maybe your entries are so quick that you miss them a lot of time. You, you hesitate to pull the trigger, you're late, you're slow, whatever. Um, you can automate your entry. And then maybe you, the trader, maybe you're a swing, more of a swing trader and you, the trader, want to manage the exit. Okay, you can do that too. It's totally up to you whether you want to go full auto, partial, anything in between. 
Lastly, but possibly in the big picture, the most important thing uh, about why you should want to automate is that automation will scale. Automation scales in a way that a human just absolutely cannot do. Um, if I identify a, a setup, an edge that works in a given market, um, or multiple different setups, different edges that work in different markets, whatever. Um, if I want to deploy this this edge or these edges, these different edges to multiple markets, so let's say I've got 14 different instruments that I would like to trade. I can't do that as a human. Are you kidding me? No way. I'm going to have like 14 domes up on six different screens and try to be bouncing back and forth between them and keeping my brain around the context of each one of those to understand what's going on. There's no way. Okay, maybe... Maybe nothing, I'm sure. There probably are some savant types out there, some Rain Man types, et cetera, who could do something like that. Um, I, I'm sure as hell not one of those. <laughs> There's no way I could do that. I, you know, juggling two instruments, I've, I've done that, and that is hard enough alone uh, on its own. So certainly juggling a whole bunch is just not even remotely feasible. But with automation, yeah, I can have 14 different setups running or, or the same setup in 14 instruments or whatever, uh, you know, absolutely can do that. No problem. The computer will not even break a sweat, won't even blink. So if you really want to scale what you're doing, automation is the only way to, to really feasibly do it, uh, in my opinion, do it effectively. Um, and in particular, it can allow you to not have this feeling of like you have to trade big in your one instrument. You know, I'm an ES trader and I got to make my thousand dollars today or whatever, whatever the thing is that we get fixated on these numbers. Um, you could take just, you know, a couple trades a day in a dozen different markets or a few ticks a day in, in 14 or 15 different markets or something like that. That adds up. Um, it's also really good because if a particular market isn't giving you any signals today or, you know, just the opportunities aren't there for whatever your edge is, um, the opportunity might be there in a bunch of other instruments. So that's another really useful reason, really powerful reason to want to automate. All right. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the elephant in the room, I guess you could say, uh, which is why is it that mechanical systems always lose. You know, you know, why do I say that? I don't think I'm, well, I know I'm certainly not the only one to say this mechanical brainless enter when indicator A crosses indicator B or whatever systems, they will always eventually ultimately lose money. Why? Well, one of the main reasons is that the TA indicators, um, most people tend to use are price-based. They're using, you know, moving averages. They're using Fibonacci levels, they're using you know, pivots, or whatever. They're using all these different things that are just derived from price, which means they lag. They're late. They're always just showing you, okay, price was that. By the time you react to it, it's literally in the past. It's already happened. Um, you didn't see it coming. Uh, and you know you might think you see it coming. You say, oh, that's that's about to cross. That, that thing is about to happen. So you go ahead and get in early and then, whoops, the thing didn't happen. And now you're in a trade that isn't even a valid trade by your own rules. So um, that's probably the primary reason. But another big reason why these systems lose is a lot of times I think people hear automation and they assume that means it's a robot that can't lose money. Um, you know, it's just a, a machine that spits out money for you. And that is not the trace, the, 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 the trace. <laughs> that is not the case. Um, that is definitely not the case. Absolutely. If you've got a losing system, a, a losing approach and you automate it, you're just going to lose more efficiently. You're going to lose faster. You're going to lose bigger. You're going to lose better. <laughs> That's probably not what any of us want. So automation absolutely can lose. Um, but also, and possibly most importantly, is people want to automate just before they even understand trading. Like, what is trading? What, how does it work? How, why does price move? What makes price move? What is it? Is it really random? I mean, there's a lot of belief out there that, you know, oh, the markets are random, a random walk down Wall Street and all this kind of stuff. The markets are not random, especially the futures markets are not random, but really any of these markets, they're not random. Um, you know, I won't go into that. I could I could go off on that for an hour, but they're not random. It's that simple. So it's up to us to find an edge that can capitalize on these things that happen that are not random. All right. So if these systems always lose money, why the heck are we building them? Right? What is the point to building losing systems? Well, that's a, a perfectly reasonable question. Uh, but the fact is that, number one, these approaches, these TA indicator approaches, they're familiar to people. Um, so we can focus on the platform side of things, the how you do this, because that's what this is about. I'm not teaching trading here. I'm not teaching how to make money here. I'm teaching how to automate, how to build things, how to take something from idea in your head, 
I wonder if there's an edge to whatever, and then actually build it into something you can test and validate. That's what this is all about. And these these approaches, they're familiar. People know them. If I start out with you know, something doing complex order flow automation, people only people who are like heavy duty into order flow, like us in TRG, are going to have a clue what I'm doing. So it, it's important that people not get lost out of the gate. So that's why I picked these TA systems. There's something simple that people are familiar with. Um, above all, good trading is really about your process and good trading automation is about automating your process and your process it's your process it's going to be different for everybody everyone's got their own unique spin on process but you have to really understand that process in order to automate it and nothing will get you understanding your process at a deeper level than trying to automate it because by definition you can't automate it if you don't understand it and so even just the the active, even if you aren't actually going to go through with automating it, but just sitting down and even attempting to think about it as if you were going to automate it will reveal so many things about your process that you may not have really thought about. And you'll realize, oh, hang on, I do this. Oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. Or maybe there's a better way to do that. Or, you know, maybe that can be augmented or improved or, or changed or whatever. Um it's going to reveal things about what you do. So you know, that's what this is all about, is automating your process. Um, it's also really valuable to understand why these systems lose money. Because they may lose money, but that doesn't mean that they can't be turned into a viable system. Um, you're going to need to augment them pretty significantly. Out of the box, these systems where they're just blindly trading you know, indicator flashes or whatever. Uh, yeah, ultimately, over the long run, those are always going to lose. They might work for a day, a week, a month. They might work for a year. I can't tell you how many times I've had a system where I do you know, back testing for a year on it, and, and it's great. It's on fire. It's doing fantastic. But then you pick a completely different year, and it utterly falls apart, and it just gets destroyed. That's what happens. Um, this is very, very typical. So it's worth trying to build these things, because then you'll see where the weak points are. You will understand the weaknesses of these systems and you'll understand, okay, if I like something about this and I want to pursue a system based on this, here's where I need to improve it. Here's the areas I need to fix, basically. It's also hugely valuable because if you learn how to build these, you can automate anything, including stuff that actually works. And that's ultimately where I'm hoping people take this, is this is just the starting point. This will get you to a point where you can have, like I said, you can take that idea. I wonder if, and you can go from, I wonder if, to I have a bot that does that and gave me data and validated whether there's an idea here that could work or not. Um, and you'll be able to get there very quickly. So that's what this is about. This is about having the skill to actually automate anything you want at all. Um, but starting with something relatively bite-sized that you can kind of sink your teeth into and, and understand what you're doing. It's also really useful to build these because, at least for me, this was the case for me. I know it's been the case for some others. Maybe it'll be the case for you. By really understanding why these systems fail, it helped me be able to walk away from them and stop chasing them. Because I spent years and years and years chasing these kinds of completely mechanical, sort of brainless TA-based systems. Um, and multivariate split testing every possible combination of settings and parameters to find the magic settings that, you know, oh, it's it's 4, 3, and 12. Those are the numbers. Those are the magic numbers. And then, of course, they don't work on any other, you know, uh, out of sample is what's called uh, testing. So knowing why these fail allowed me to feel really comfortable saying, yeah, you know what? I'm not looking at these anymore. And I don't feel any regret. I don't feel that nagging voice of, oh, but, but, but maybe, 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 and keep getting drawn back to them as I was for so many years. So perhaps building these will help some of you who maybe suffer from that search for the Holy Grail. Um, maybe it will help you to, to leave these ideas behind as well and feel confident in that decision. It's also really useful to know if you're going to hire this stuff out. Um, you know, it's really useful to know how to talk to those people. If you're going to talk to somebody about building a system um, and you've built stuff yourself, even if you don't want to do that in the future, 
but you understand the terminology, you understand how to think, you understand the process of thinking logically and and how to explain that to someone. And that's really vital. If you're dealing with an outsourcer, especially if you're like paying them by the hour or something like that, um, it becomes really easy for unethical outsourcers to bamboozle you and uh, use terminology and words and things that maybe you don't entirely understand, but, oh, they sound like they know what they're talking about, so I'll just let them do it. Um, and, uh, you know, if you've done it yourself, you will know when they're pulling the wool over your eyes, so to speak. And then lastly, you know, this is just plain core knowledge that's going to get you on a good path. That's the idea here. This is stuff that I think, from what I see online anyway, most Sierra Chart users don't know how to do. Uh, or in in many cases, don't even realize that you can do. Um, and so if you've got this base knowledge here, it's going to put you on a really good path to be able to build a- any idea you dream up. That's what it's all about. Now, let's talk about a foundation first real quick. If you haven't already been through them, I cannot stress more strongly that you really should go check out the online courses at tradingresearchgroup.com. Uh, they're ridiculously cheap. I think it's 25 bucks for the online courses. You're not going to find any better, more comprehensive, and more accurate information on trading with order flow than these courses um, at any price, and certainly not at 25 bucks. So you know, go check them out. They really are the foundation of everything we're doing. You know, if you are going to you know, make a building, um, you got to start with the foundation. You got to build a really solid foundation first. You don't go get a degree in interior decorating um, you know, or a master's in fine art or whatever. And so you're you know, going to put paintings on the walls when you haven't built the house yet. You, you, you're doing it out of order. You need the base foundational knowledge first. That is super, super important. Um, to that end, bots are really about what's called Boolean logic. And, you know, fancy word, right? Um, it, it just, maybe maybe a lot of people don't even know what that word means. It doesn't matter. It's it's a word, right? And all it really means is things like if, and, or, then, else. Conditional logic. It's that simple. Like, really, that's it. That's the programming language right there. If, and, or, and, then, else. If you understand what those things mean, you're most of the way there. Um, you know, if this indicator is this value and that indicator is this value or this indicator is that value, then do this. Get long, get short, get flat, whatever. Um, that's that's the crux of everything we're going to be doing. It's absolutely essential, totally required to think this way when you're designing bots, because this is how you're going to instruct the bots on what to do. It's all about this kind of logic. So if you aren't normally inclined to really thinking in kind of conditional ways about your life, um, I, I would encourage you to to start, you know, really think about any, and, and really this applies to life. This is one of the great things about this is this goes way beyond trading anything in life. You know, if I have that seventh cup of coffee, then I will have a hard time sleeping, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. You can apply Boolean logic to absolutely everything in our life. In fact, I would argue that we do, whether we realize it or not. Um, it's also really important to think something through really well and thoroughly and carefully one time. Do it once. Then you can just repurpose that work. Um, it's about efficiency. It, any, it kills me anytime I see somebody rebuilding the same indicator or the same study or the same thing over and over and over. It, just don't do that. Do it once. Do it right. Save it and then recall it again later. And Sierra Chart makes that really easy with study collections. Uh, it's so easy to just repurpose stuff and make the changes you need and presto, just like that, uh, you're ready to go. Because once you've got that framework built, which is what we're going to do in the course, it literally can be minutes to a whole new bot trading a completely different thing, a whole new idea. It can take you no time at all to go from, again, that I wonder if to here's the bot and it's running and it's taking trades and it's giving me data and telling me whether there's anything to this or not. Now, some people might be wondering, well, you know, why don't you just go buy a bot, right? Go buy an algo, rent an algo, whatever. They're out there. There's lots of them, you know, $5,000 systems, $10,000 systems. They're well known that they're out there. Um, I would argue that if someone is selling it outright, like five grand and it's yours, 10 grand and it's yours, it, it's hype. It's it's BS. Um, nobody's going to flat sell something like that for a dollar price that actually works. Um, now, there is something to be said for systems, algorithms, whatever you want to call them, 
that are on a like a lease basis, especially if they're on a performance basis where they get a percentage of, of profits or something like that. You know, that that kind of thing exists. They're out there. Um, and you know, there might be some potential in those. I still think most of those are probably also not great um, by any means. But you know, it, certainly if it's being just flat out sold for a flat dollar amount, you have to run, go the other way. Now, typically, when you're talking about the algos that are out there on the commercial market, you've got your black boxes, um, which are just you don't know what the heck it's doing. Right. You have no clue. It's just I don't know. It's trading things. It trades the, you know, moon cycles or whatever. You don't actually know what it's doing and you certainly don't have any control over it. It's just that's why it's called a black box. It's it's just a mystery mystery box that just does stuff and spits out signals or whatever. Um yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of those uh, for, for probably pretty obvious reasons. I, I want to have some idea of what's going on. I'm not going to just trust some somebody else's black box. Um, then you got your gray boxes. And, OK, gray boxes are a, a step in the right direction. Um, they're a little bit of an improvement because they let you tweak some things. You'll have some settings. You got some you can maybe set some limits, maybe set some position size limits or some times of day or dollar amount risk or whatever. There's there's stuff you can tweak. Um but the fact is, you still don't really know what it's doing. Not really. Um, you, you you can limit its ability to lose money or things like that, but you still don't really know what's going on. And if you're going to run any kind of automated trading, you've got to know what it's doing. This is pretty much rule number one. You have to know what your algo, quote unquote, uh, your, what your bot's doing. If you don't, why are you running it? Um, it's also really important that your your approach, your, your bot, it's got to be able to adapt to conditions. And I would argue that there are kind of two different paths to this, two different approaches to this. One is to try to build a really smart bot that monitors context and knows when conditions are changing. It, it monitors the the FOMC schedule and the holiday events and, and the news cycles and, you know, whatever. And it's being fed, you know, f- being fed uh, bias from Twitter, Twitter keywords. And, and there's stuff out there that does this. Absolutely. There are algorithms that do this kind of thing. Um, personally, I, I don't want anything with that much complexity because for me anyway, that becomes really, really hard to troubleshoot if something's not behaving correctly. My approach to adaptability that I would rather do is I want to have a couple of dozen bots that each have their own thing. They work under different types of conditions, different times of day, maybe different types of instruments, whatever, whatever that is. And then I want to use my human brain, which again, is much better at this kind of thing at understanding the conditions on the day, the context, what happened overnight, you know, whatever, all the different things I'm looking at. And then I will decide, okay, today's a good day for this bot. I'm going to run this one and that one and this one, whatever. Um, I want to be the conductor uh, is basically what it comes down to. And I want to have a whole bunch of little musicians out there um, all doing their things. And I'm just going to conduct them when the time is appropriate. I don't want to try to make my, my bot too smart. That's just kind of asking for trouble and, and the complexity becomes impossible to troubleshoot. Now, when it comes to automation, there are multiple ways to do it. So in Sierra chart, what are the choices? Well, first of all, it doesn't have to be difficult. I think most people probably assume that building a bot is this incredibly complex, incredibly difficult thing. It might need a degree in computer science. You know, you probably have really super complex math. We, we certainly see that in movies, movies and TV um, when they, you know, shows like Billions or, uh, um, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the name of the movie, uh, Rogue Trader. Well, not so much Rogue Trader. That was floor trading. Uh, but anyway, there have been movies about trading and, and about, you know, algorithms um, that make it sound really, really complicated. And something that only the the uber quants of the world could ever do. And that's just not the case. It doesn't have to be difficult at all. The fact is, if you can describe in plain words, in my case, English could be any language, doesn't matter. But if you can describe in plain language what you do, when you do it, why you do it, what the circumstances are under which is valid, not valid, et cetera. If you can just write all that out in language, you can build it. You can automate it. And in fact, everything I do, whenever I'm automating something, I always end up, uh, well, I don't end up, I start, I always start with plain language. I will just write out what the thing is doing in, in plain English. And then that is incredibly useful because that becomes very easy to distill down into if, then, and, or else, et cetera. Um, I can break down a, a paragraph into some simple conditional Boolean logic 
uh, steps. And next thing, next thing you know, I've got it built very, very quickly. Now, in Sierra, there's more than one way to automate. Um, the primary two ways are either using studies specifically. These are the two most powerful studies for doing trading automation in Sierra Chart. Uh, the trading system based on alert condition. This is a great study. It makes it really simple to trigger entries, exits, get flat, uh, long, short, whatever, based on a simple alert condition. Um, and this is a this is going to be a real cornerstone of the bots we're going to build during this course. Uh, this is this is kind of the nucleus of our bot engine. And then there's also the trade management by study study. And this is extremely helpful for, in particular, exits, uh, stops, but targets as well. Bottom line is this is how you can very easily have, say, a stop um, set to be a study. Like, uh, you know, I want my stop to be this moving average, or I want my stop to be the edge of a range or the, the high or low of a session or the high or low of the last whatever bars or, you know, whatever. Um, trade management by study will move your stop for you. And you can control whether it moves only one direction, like a traditional stop would, trailing stop, or whether it can move in both directions if you want it to be dynamic and, and range expansion stop or you know whatever whatever the heck you want to do. A uh, very, very powerful pair of studies. And these these two together are really the, the brain, the nerve center, the nerve center of what we're going to be building. There also are spreadsheet systems. And I actually started my automation years ago in Sierra Chart. My first steps at automating in Sierra Chart were with spreadsheets because I didn't realize there were these studies. Um, I, I went about it very backwards. I, I seem to do that a lot. I started trading with options, like the most complex instrument around. Um, and I started my automation in Sierra Chart with spreadsheets, which is the more complex way to automate. Um, but I got really good with spreadsheets and they are very powerful. Um, they are great. They, in particular, the study in question is called Spreadsheet System for Trading. And I, I'm a big fan, but it has complexity to it that I think overwhelms a lot of people, especially if you're newer to automation in Sierra Chart. Um, the, the syntax, the, the way you have to actually write the alert formulas in a spreadsheet is just different enough from the way you would have to write them in a regular trade, you know, a spreadsheet formula uh, alert study or, or, or uh, alert um, alert formula syntax. They're just different enough that I think it's easy to get tripped up on and it can be very, very hard to troubleshoot what's going on. Um, there are some definite quirks to spreadsheet systems. They don't always work the way you think they should. Uh, there are some oddities to them. But if you push through all of that and you get good with them, they're very, very powerful. These days, I tend to use both. I use the spreadsheet system for certain things that it can do that the studies can't. And then I use the studies, which are just simpler and faster to work with for everything else. So using the two of them combined is really ultimately the most powerful way to go, in my opinion. Lastly, there's what Sierra Chart calls Axel. Um, most people would call C++. Axel is really just C++ with some custom bells and whistles thrown on. Um, we're not going to be touching that. It is great for building your own custom studies. I've actually begun doing that now. I'm not a trained programmer, but I've taught myself enough to the point where I now have a nice little suite of half a dozen or so custom studies that do various things that are really super useful to me in automation. Um, and I'm getting better and better all the time. And I'm building more and more studies all the time. And I'm more and more starting to head that direction um, because there are some definite advantages to that. But and, and by all means, if you're a programmer by, by profession, perhaps, as a lot of people are, um, yeah, learn yourself some Axel, learn yourself some C++. It's really valuable. Um, but we are not going to need it for this course. We're not going to touch it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to do anything with it. So don't worry. If you're not a programmer, don't know anything about programming, you will not need to know anything about any such stuff. Um, you've actually got everything you need right out of the box with Sierra Chart. It is ridiculously powerful what it comes with, um, but it's not obvious. This stuff is largely kind of hidden. Um you know, and, and Sierra Chart, they don't do a really good job. They don't do any job of marketing or like talking about what you can do with this thing. I'm not sure why that is, but they just don't talk about what their their software is capable of, which is a shame because it's capable of some really great stuff. Um, it's got everything you need to get going already there. Um, yeah, there's some third party stuff you can add to to augment and make better and improve and, and add special bells and whistles for sure. Um, you know, Lee, ha, uh, his company is called Emoji Trading, and he's got some great studies for Sierra Chart for doing all kinds of different cool stuff. And I use them and they're fantastic, but they are something you add after you know what you're doing. 
And then they are productivity enhancers and they are, you know, huge productivity enhancers. They do some really important stuff, but they are not where you start. And I think most people, they want to start with the fancy indicators and, you know, add the expensive add-ons. There's absolutely no need to do that. Um, it's always best to keep things as simple as you possibly can. Um, it, it's it's hard. It, it's actually, you know, ironically, I guess, or, or, or counterintuitively, it's hard to be simple. Um it's it's complicated, in fact, to get to simple, uh, and it takes some work. But the more you can simplify, the more you can strip away. We have a tendency, I think, especially in trading, to add things. Anytime, if this system isn't working, I just need to throw another thing at it. I need to add another indicator. I need to add a this, add a that, whatever, and just keep layering and piling more stuff on. That's more often than not the wrong approach. You probably need to strip stuff away. Um, I've had the best... Um, lack of a better word, success, uh, the best results from stripping things back and keeping them very, very simple. So in this class, we are not, as I mentioned, going to be doing any C++ Axel coding at all. Not going to talk about it, not going to use it, not going to do it whatsoever. We're also not going to use any third-party studies or software. Now, okay, yeah, fine. We're going to use a spreadsheet. So yeah, you will want to have a spreadsheet because we're going to do some data analysis and look at the results of some of these bots and figure out how to kind of figure out where we need to look to improve or, or you know, whatever. And to do that, we're going to use, it could be Excel, uh, you know, Google Sheets is my personal favorite, Open Office, uh, Office Libre, I think is one of them. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of spreadsheets out there. It doesn't matter. Any spreadsheet will do. Um, we're not going to use like super crazy sophisticated features of spreadsheets that maybe only Excel has or add-ins or anything like that. So, you know, plain old Google Sheets will totally do the job. Um, we're also not going to be using any advanced math. And I couldn't use advanced math if I wanted to, if my life depended on it. I I didn't go to college. Uh, it's a miracle I graduated high school. Um, I don't know advanced math, don't have any advanced math. This is going to be very elementary math at most. So, um, again, we're going to keep it, keep it simple. So... Real quick plug for me, uh, if you want to you know, rent me, I am available. Uh, if you've got something that you need some help with, some kind of private coaching on on what you're trying to do, consulting or development work on systems or automation or, you know, or platform training or anything like that, whatever, feel free, reach out to me, Jonathan at tradinglifecoach.com. Uh, I'm happy to be available to discuss things and, and help you out where I can. Of course, I'm also in the TRG pit all the time, which you know, TRGers know that. But if you could use some help with something, feel free, reach out. All right, now let's get to the fun. Here's your obligatory creepy image that will stick with you for the rest of your days. You're welcome. You can you can enjoy that one forever. So this is where we start to get into the really fun stuff. Um, here is what we're going to build during the course. Um, these are the systems we're going to build. We're going to build a moving average crossover. Uh, we're going to build a range trader. We're going to build a mean reversion, the TTM squeeze, the Camarillo pivots, and the volume divergence. I mentioned those before. I want to go over them again. And there's going to be two versions of every one of these. There's going to be a high frequency version and a low frequency version. Um, and there's you know useful things in both of those. Uh, so it's it's worth understanding how easy it can be to create uh, variants of your bots. So. We're going to design a framework. This is a screenshot of kind of what the framework looks like. Um, couldn't fit at all, of course, because it doesn't all fit in that little window, but that this is the bulk of it. This is what we're going to be building. Um, and once you have this framework and it will be saved as a study collection, you want to make a new bot, you literally just drop the study collection in, hook in a couple of signals, and presto, you've got a new bot. It, it can be a couple of minutes for a completely brand new bot from nothing. Um, so it, it's worth... We're going to do an entire session just on this framework, and it's worth doing because once you have it, like I said, you can build anything. You can automate anything, feed whatever you want into it, and presto, you've got an automated system. Um, we're going to build six, 12 actually, because we're going to do two versions of each one of these bots. We're going to use some of the, the more popular methods of today and frankly, yesterday, because all of these methods... These have been around forever. Uh, all of this stuff, moving averages and pivots and, and uh, you know, TTM squeeze and, and momentum and reversion. And none of this stuff is new. This stuff has been around forever. Um, so, yeah, we're going to build using these, but these are, are not cutting edge by any means. Um, but it's the knowledge you're going to gain from building them that is so valuable. Uh, we're going to use the replay feature, of course, to get some data on these different setups, on these different bots and find out, you know, how do they perform? Uh, and then 
then what do we do from there? We're going to also talk a bunch about how to optimize your platform for replay, because especially like if you've ever spent any time with the replay in Sierra, you've probably noticed that it can be sluggish. It can chug, it can get chunky and, and be very, um, yeah, not so fun to work with, but there are a lot of things you can do to improve it and speed it up. And I have gone very deep down the rabbit hole of optimization on Sierra Chart for Replay. Uh, I think I've I've probably got my my platform as optimized as it is humanly possible to do. Uh, I don't think there's anything left, but uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, we're also going to talk about what do you do with this data? You know, you do replays, you get a bunch of data, but then what? Well, you got to figure out what to look for, what matters, what doesn't, what you can keep, what you want to throw away, and then what you feed back into your bot to learn from it so that you can improve it. Um, and at the same time, avoiding things like curve fitting, um, which is just basically tuning your bot to the results. And so in which case you can get a bot that has perfect trading on on this particular set of data on a particular time range, this particular month or year or whatever, it's going to trade that perfectly. But then you feed it any other time period and it's going to do crap. It's going to completely fall apart. Um, and you have to really watch out for that and work at avoiding curve fitting. All right. So we're clear. I'm going to just stress this again because I don't want anybody coming away from this thinking that these are just machines that are going to just hand me money over and over and over again. The machine's just going to infinitely print me money. Uh, that is not what these do. These will always eventually lose money because these are mechanical, brainless TA systems. The value here is in understanding how to build stuff in Sierra Chart. That's what this is about, not these particular systems. These systems are just a good way to learn how to build stuff. They're a good foundation. You can have systems like what you see here. Here's just some some snapshots of some of my recent back tests you know that I've done um you know and they can look amazing a 97% win rate 100% win rate over some amount of time i think this was like a month or something like that i forget um doesn't matter because you're going to end up testing it on some other time period where it's going to get just absolutely killed um so the key is you look at something like this and you say okay great this has a you know 97% win rate but still loses money. Okay, let's look at the losers. Why? What happens when it loses? What do we need to what do we need to prevent from happening? Is my stop just stupidly wide? Uh, am I am I is it too aggressive? Am I am I moving my stop to break even too fast and I'm cutting off all my winners before they have a chance to to do what they're supposed to do? There, there's a lot of things you can learn even from a losing system. This is about you knowing what is possible to do, what can be done in Sierra Chart, what can be automated, and more importantly, how to do it. How do you actually pull that off? How do you automate this stuff? It's not enough to just know that, oh, I bet you could automate that, but I don't have the faintest idea how to do it, so I'm just not going to bother. Now you'll know how to do it, and you can actually you know, attack it and give it a try. So we're going to spend over 20 hours. We're going to talk about the design approach to building bots. Really, really important. It has to start there. Um, we're going to talk about actually designing the framework itself, that same bot framework you just saw, and you're going to walk away with that. We're going to build finished bots, start to finish, that actually run and you can go off and play with. We're going to talk about the best practices for using Replay for sure, because we're going to be doing a lot of that. Um, we're going to get into data analysis. Again, I've got all this data. I've got all these numbers that my, my Replay has gathered gathered, but what the heck do I do with all of them? And then, of course, we're going to talk about how do we make this more efficient? Because it's not terribly helpful if, you know, running a replay on a year's worth of data takes six weeks to complete. And that can be the case. Um, I've had systems that run that slowly, and they're infuriating to try to get any kind of long-term data on. Um, so you got to have ways to speed that up. Unfortunately, there are some ways to massively speed up uh, your replay process. So we'll get into that. Now, again, so I'm clear, this is not being aimed at total beginners. All right, I'll be straightforward about that. This is not a, a total rank beginner Sierra chart course. However, uh, of course, there's a private area in the community for the students to congregate, help each other, talk, uh, share tips and tricks and things of that nature. Um, I will always answer questions as thoroughly as I possibly can. Um, I am very readily available in the pit. TRG people know I'm almost always there, you know, unless I'm asleep or like out grocery shopping or something. <laughs> Odds are I'm probably sitting at my computer in the pit because I have no other life. This is it. This is my life. 
Um, so I will always answer your questions to the best of my ability uh, and uh, help you out in any way I can. I'm also, if I do say so myself, at the risk of patting myself on the back, I'm pretty darn good at explaining complicated things. Um, I was the kid in school uh, who, you know, if the teacher explained something and I could tell that you know, one of my classmates or something was just lost, had no idea what they're talking about. I could re-explain it to them and use an analogy or a metaphor or something. And they'd go, oh, now I get it. OK. And I used to do the same thing. I took college courses when I was in high school uh, in music, uh, digital, digital audio, early digital audio. We're talking 19... 19- 88, 89, 90 uh, in there. So early digital audio stuff. And um, yeah, I, I was regularly doing this to people who were 20, 30 years older than me. Uh, and I was explaining things that the teacher explained, but they didn't understand. And then I would explain it and they go, oh, okay, now I get how to use this. So, you know, if I do say so myself, I'm pretty good at explaining complicated things. Um, there's also going to be homework. I, I will expect people to do work. Um, it's going to be fun. I, I'm, I'm, I promise you that you will enjoy the homework. It's going to be cool stuff and you're going to get really excited about what you build, but you are going to be expected to build these things yourself. I will walk you through what you need to do step by step completely. And you'll have access to the recording, of course, to watch it, but then I'm not going to just hand it to you right away. I'm going to say, okay, go off and build your own version of this. And then, you know, at the following week's class or whatever, I will I will eventually release the chart books and you'll have my versions of them. And that's fine. But the point here is for you to do it yourself. If you don't do the work, then you're not really getting the benefit of what we're here to do. And so there's not much more much point to it. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be homework, but you're going to like it. And as I mentioned, everything's recorded. Everything's always recorded, including this session. Um, and it will be in our library and you will be able to review those recordings as often as you want to forever. So I, I strongly recommend, um, you know, watching stuff more than once. And these are especially if, if you're not super technical, if you're not super fluent in Sierra chart already, you're going to want to review these more than once and, and step through and pause and back up and all that. And that's what they're for. That's the whole idea. All right. Now, a few prerequisites I strongly recommend uh, having before this course. Um, The first is you've been through the TRG online courses. And uh, those courses, by the way, this is on a slide coming up, but those courses are included with this class. So you will have no excuse that you haven't been through the TRG online courses. I really recommend you go through them because they will open your eyes to what is really going on in the markets and make you have a better understanding of why these TA systems ultimately lose money. But what you might want to do to modify them to make them feasible. That is possible. Um, So you're going to want to have the latest or at least a fairly recent version of Sierra chart. Um, You're going to definitely need to be basically computer literate. Okay. I'm not going to help out with people having trouble struggling with windows, uh, struggling to just basically operate the simplest functions of their computer. Um, So make sure you've got a a reasonable amount of comfort with just navigating your, your computer and your platform. Um, you're going to need to have a spreadsheet of some kind. Uh, again, we're, it could be any, doesn't matter. Excel, fine. Uh, I like Google Sheets just because I like that it's always saved on, as I go. I never lose anything. It's in the cloud. It's convenient. Um, but any spreadsheet will do. But we're going to definitely do some some analytics in spreadsheets once we've got data from the replay. Um, above all, just participate. That is the main thing I look for in students is just participate. Do the work, uh, ask the questions, interact. You know, there's there's nothing more disappointing than somebody who, especially, you know, they they pay me money. I mean, yeah, it's nice that you pay me money and all, but I, I want to know that you got something out of this. I, I want to feel like it was worthwhile. Um, I don't just want to, you know, take your money and say, okay, fine. You don't want to do anything. Thanks for the money. Bye. Um, I would much rather see you progress and see you grow as a as a trader, as a developer of, of automation, you know, whatever your goals are. Um, I really want to see you advance in those. So just participate and you'll get a lot more out of this. Okay. The full workshop has got 13 sessions, um, and I I stress interactive here because, as I just mentioned a second ago, I really want people to interact. I really want questions. I want uh, involvement. I want to know that you're you're getting this and you're paying attention and and it's making sense. Or if it's not, if you're lost on something and it's not making sense, I want to know that too. Uh, Over 20 hours for sure of material, and frankly, that 20 hours is probably quite low because I'm from past experience, I'm pretty sure some of these sessions are going to run long just because that's what happens when you start to go deep into automation is 
people's brains start to light up and they start to go, hey, wait a minute, can you do this? Can you do that? And next thing you know, you know, we're off on tangents and, you know, they're good tangents. It's, it's good, but it, it adds time. So certainly 20 hours for sure of material. As I mentioned, it includes the TRG Tickmaker and Get Funded courses, four courses. All of them are included, and I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend. I plead with you to make sure you have gone through those beforehand. Um, and even if you're already in TRG and you've been through them before, if you haven't looked at them in a long time, give them a quick scan. It won't take you long. You'll probably get through them all in an hour. Um, but uh, it's a good refresher to have them uh, fresh of mind. Um, there is a private stream just for the students of this course in our community, which we call the pit. Uh, and, you know, 24 seven, anytime you can go in there and you can speak to your other students. And we, we do always have students from all over the world. So people are at different time zones. There's a pretty reasonable chance there's somebody up and, and around uh, just about any time of the day. Um, you do have unlimited access to the recordings, of course. Uh, there, You'll have a, a separate section in the library just for the recordings for this class, and you'll have access to those anytime you want to review them again. I'm also including step-by-step -step workflows for how to build all the bots. Now, what's a workflow, you might ask? Uh, this is a workflow. And these are from my, my previous course that I did uh, earlier this year. Um, and uh, this is, you know, it's it's every step along the way and, and every single thing you need to do to build a bot or or do a whatever, whatever it is. Um, and I break them down into logical chunks, et cetera. You can see this one's with sessions two and three. Uh, and I've got them for every, you know, every session where we're doing stuff with the platform. Um, there will be workflows like this to break it all down. And you can just go review them and look at them and it will walk you through step by step. So some people are more video oriented. They want to see it like live and interactive. Other people want to just kind of have it static to read and follow. Um, so, you know, you got both ways uh, up to you how you want to learn. But the more options, the better in my boat, in my uh, opinion, rather. Um, you're also, of course, going to get all the chart books, spreadsheets, formulas, whatever I create, you will get. As I mentioned, I am intentionally not going to just give you the chart book at the end of a session. I'm not going to do a session, build a bot, give you the chart book. Because the point is, you need to go build this yourself. I want you to do the work. I will eventually give you all the chart books for sure. I'm not going to not give them to you. But initially, I want everybody to have done the work themselves. It's very important. If you want to get anything out of this, you you got to do the work yourself. All right. Um, you're going to have lots and lots of Q&A time uh, with me. Um, I've got, in addition to obviously time in the sessions, there are dedicated office hours Q&A sessions where you're going to be able to just ask questions of me, discuss, uh, go over anything that you're confused on or that you want more information on or what have you. And of course, you're going to have ongoing interaction and access to me uh, in the community. Um, like I said, I'm always there, pretty much always there. Uh, and you can reach out to me anytime. Now, I'm calling this stop trading manually again for the the obvious reason uh, of uh, you know manual trading. I believe is not the highest and best use of our brains. Uh, it's it's not what we should probably be focusing on. Um, so you know if it's something you want to do, that's fine. You know some people just really enjoy the process of clicking the buttons and doing the trading, and okay, that's totally fine. Um, but uh, I think it's just worth understanding that uh, you know, our brains are really good at certain kinds of things, and that's where I want to focus my energy. So the classes are going to be on Saturdays because we don't need live markets. So we're going to do them on Saturdays. <clears throat> Currently, the time I've chosen is 11 a.m. Eastern. Now. I am actually open to changing the time. I can never pick the perfect time zone for everyone, unfortunately, because we do have people from all different time zones. And inevitably, somebody gets the short straw here and somebody gets a lousy time where for them it's 1 a.m. or whatever. And it's it's really, really crappy. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. There's no perfect time zone, unfortunately. But if enough people sort of said, like, it'd be better to have this shifted a few hours or whatever, we can discuss doing that for sure. I'm open to it. Um, the schedule is going to be starting on January 6th. We're going to do a housekeeping session. I expect that to go about an hour, just kind of introducing you to how these sessions are going to run. On the 13th, we're going to start talking about the types of systems we're going to build. And I'm going to give you kind of a primer on Sierra chart automation, uh, alert formulas and syntax and, and kind of how they work and, and very basic level stuff. Uh, and I'm thinking that'll probably run around 90 minutes. Might go a little long. That's okay. On the 20th, we'll get into the actual approach we're going to take to building a system. We're going to start talking about the thinking involved and kind of how you design the idea of a bot. Again, I'm expecting that to be around 90 minutes or so. And then the 27th, we'll have our first office hours Q&A session. Um, I'm slotting that for an hour, but I'm. It, it's going to be up to you guys. If there's more questions, 
and we're there for more than an hour, then that's totally okay. I'm willing to stay. Uh, on the 3rd, we're going to start actually building stuff. And on February 3rd, we are going to build the bot framework. Uh, and this is going to be the core engine for everything we do afterwards. We're going to keep reusing this same framework and just plugging different things into it. So I'm scheduling 90 minutes to build the framework. Uh, again, if it runs long, it runs long. That's quite all right with me. Um, but that's kind of what I'm thinking should be enough. It's going to depend largely on how many questions there are and things like that. We'll see how fast it goes. February 10th, we're going to start building our first real bots. We'll start with the moving average crossover bot just because it's simple, easy to understand. Uh, and then we're going to gradually move on. We're going to move to the overbought, oversold uh, type of, of bot. And I'm figuring two hours for these. Again, if it runs long, it runs long. But that's kind of what I'm expecting. Um, I'm really carefully designing this so that at each bot, there is a concept that is new. So it's going to be, here is the new thing we're going to learn in this bot that we're going to add to it that wasn't in the previous one. And each one is going to layer on a new concept and then another new concept and then another new concept. Um, and so when you get to the end, you're going to be able to see like, oh, wow, okay, I can put all these things together and stack them. Um, February 17th, we'll build the range bot and then the momentum bot. February 24th, another office hours Q&A. You'll be able to ask stuff about what we've done so far, make sure no one's lost. I want to make sure everybody understands kind of where we're at, what we're doing. March 2nd, we'll do the volume divergence bot. And again, as I mentioned, we're going to start with volume divergence just because it's simple. It's easy to understand. You know, volume is going up and price is going down. Volume is going down. Price is going up. You know, simple divergence. But it could be an anything divergence. doesn't matter what it is. You can plug in whatever you want. We're going to, going to use volume. Uh, and then we're going to do the, the Camarillo pivot spot. And then on March 9th, we'll have all the bots built. We're going to start talking about how do we test them. How do we validate what we have found in the testing? We're going to get into replay. I'm figuring a couple hours for that. March 16th, we'll dig into the results of our replays and what do we need to learn from this? What do we take away? What do we keep? What do we throw out? What's important? What's not important? Uh, that sort of stuff. Figuring 90 minutes. Who knows? We'll see. Um, replay optimization on March 23rd. That's where we're going to start talking about, how, you know, how can I more efficiently do more replays faster? Um, because if one replay is going to take, you know, again, six weeks to complete, that's not real helpful when you want to just quickly test an idea. Uh, and I have a lot of tips and tricks for ways to improve the overall performance of your platform and replay in particular. Uh, and then finally, on March 30th, we'll finish it up. We will do a final Q&A wrap up session. Again, an hour I'm counting on, but it'll go until it's done until you guys are out of things to talk about or ask about or discuss. So uh, I am flexible on that. Now, the price for this is going to be $9.99, but you guys get a 30% discount for being early birds. So until December 18th, you will be able to get this entire course for $6.99. And remember, it does include also all four of the TickMaker courses, uh, which again, I, I I can't force anyone to take them, but I really strongly recommend you go through these before the course starts. They will be extremely helpful in giving you a solid base understanding of what's really going on in the markets um, and help you to understand what's going on with these systems and what you really probably will want to add to them. All right, there you go. It's a $300 savings through December 18th. You can register now. I know some of you are already registered, already signed up, uh, but uh, trgp.nl. Get it? P&L? trgp.nl? Ha ha, it's a joke. Blame Lee. Uh, trgp.nl slash automate. And that will take you to the page where you can register for this if this is your jam. So on that note, we are done with these slides. And I saw out of the corner of my eye stuff in the chat but I have not actually looked at it. So now I will, and I will see what is over there. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Let's start with Mark said, uh, the bots I mentioned are TA bots, but you said TA is money loser. Yeah. Now, I because I don't know exactly when this came in, uh, actually, I can see That the was time. quite early, JBC. So yeah, I was going to say, I probably bit, But it's that. probably worth reinforcing the premise yeah. of this education. Exactly. So I probably did explain that uh, thoroughly enough, but I'll I'll touch on it again. I mean, basically, the markets don't know about price levels. The markets don't know about your moving average crossover or whatever. They, they don't know. They don't care. Um, the markets ultimately, and this is why I'm such a proponent of order flow, the markets move and are dictated by volume. Volume makes the markets move, period. That's it. Full stop. That is what makes the market move. Um, not, you know, markets don't move because, oh, it hit support. It hit resistance. No, 
<laughs> if it, it, it like I love the idea like this is this is one of these ridiculous pet peeves and I used to be a huge proponent of support and resistance right I absolutely I have oh I, I I cringe to think about it now but I can't tell you how many times I have explained to people how you know resistance becomes support support becomes resistance you know and here's one that I never personally repeated but I've seen in print to this day on places like investopedia and you know whatever it's out there the more times a a support or resistance level or trend line is touched the stronger that level becomes that is the most backwards concept imaginable if you just understand about volume because the volume that caused it to stop there is now gone. It has traded. It's not there anymore. The more touches of a level, the weaker that level becomes. It's going to break. It makes no sense. Um, so this, there's a lot of these TA ideas out there that are just utterly wrong. And, and they're so provably wrong. It's not even like it's up to interpretation. It, they're provably, demonstrably wrong. Uh, and so that's why these kinds of systems are always going to lose money because they are they are completely ignorant of anything that's actually going on in the market. And the market could not care less about your support line, your, your resistance line, your trend line, your moving average, your pivot, your you know whatever. Um, it cares JBC, about I'm Mark's pressing in the chat. He, he's, he's, I think he's wanting to understand why the example bots used in the course are not order flow based. Yes. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Yes, that is. There's a very good reason for that. Is frankly, most people don't understand order flow. It's way too complicated. It's great for those who understand it. And I did a class earlier this year that was building one bot, just one specific bot, and we spent. Oh, seven or eight sessions. I, I can't even remember how many mm. sessions it was now. Um, but we spent a bunch of sessions to build one single bot that did trade order flow. Um, and it was a really good starting place. It was a pretty decent bot. It's actually a, a foundational bot for me that I have used in my own trading and, and I've augmented and added to it a little bit here and there, but it's a good foundation. The thing is, you have to understand order flow. You have to understand unfinished business and what does it mean and when is it important? When is it not important? You have to understand price projectors and you have to understand these concepts. If you don't, you're going to be lost. So most people are familiar with TA systems and the focus here is on the platform. It's on the techniques of building automation, not trading. So I'm not teaching anyone how to trade. I'm not trying to teach anyone how to make money. I'm not I'm not teaching anything to do with with, you know, some magic money making machine. Um, this is about understanding your platform enough to build automation for whatever you want to do and picking some of the more popular TA systems out there. I did that primarily for two reasons. One, like I mentioned, they're simple. They're easy to understand. People won't get too distracted and lost by the complexity of the signal that we're dealing with. Whereas order flow signals can be, for people who don't know order flow, totally overwhelming and they'd be totally lost. Um, but the second reason is because I want, uh, I'm hopeful anyway, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, let's put it that way, that this will help people who are maybe on that treadmill of chasing TA holy grails. Maybe this will help them to finally see, wow, I get why those don't work now. I'm going to abandon those and I'm going to feel very confident in my decision to abandon those systems you know, or at least certainly to abandon them as the dumb brainless TA systems that they are. Now, if you want to take one of these systems and this is actually this has already been asked within TRG and, and it's totally the right way to think. If you were to want to take one of these systems and, and I don't care which one moving averages, right? Dumbest system imaginable. 5200 moving average crossover like silly. But if you want to take that system and you want to augment it with order flow, that makes it a completely different thing. You augment it with order flow. You augment it with time based ranges that we understand the statistics of. You augment it with expectancy. Some of the stuff Lee has covered in his most recent course, which you know, a lot of you probably don't know about, but that's OK. Um, point is. There are ways it is possible to take even a dumb brainless TA system, augment it so that it is actually considering volume and range statistics and expectancy and you know things of that nature, and you can make it work. Now, those are much more complicated concepts. They are not easy for most people to get their head around. They're not where you want to start. This is where you want to start. You want to start simple and then build up from there. So um, hopefully that answered your question, Mark. But if you've got a follow up, by all means, keep it keep it coming. Appreciate the question for sure. All right. Let me scroll back up again here. See what else we had. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu, that's me. Um, let's see. 
Yes. Oh, if, if Bob's got a great point is, and I'm actually, I'm going to, I have a section in my course on exactly this is how to search for help. Uh, and g- using Google is better. The, the search function at Sierra chart is not quite useless, but close. <laughs> um, but if you use Google and you get good with Google's advanced search operators, um, and you constrain it to searching within only the Sierra chart website, for example, and maybe you exclude the support board, you get only document, only um, um, uh, docs, only uh, 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 the instructions, you know, manuals, information, whatever, uh, the, their, the formal proper documentation. Um, suddenly it's very, very useful. And Google's got all of those pages in their index. So yeah, by all means, um, use Google to search the Sierra chart help for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Edward, is Boolean logic what software decision trees or flowcharts are based upon? Yeah, Lee gave you a good link for... for uh, oh, sorry, that's not... Uh, I, I, my eyes deceived me. That's a different thing. That's the link to the signup page. So thank you for that, Lee. Um, but uh, Boolean logic, yeah, a software decision tree absolutely is going to be... It doesn't have to be only based on Boolean logic, um, but it frequently for, I think, most of us, if we were to sit down and build a flowchart, most of us intuitively would start doing Boolean logic, whether we even knew it or not, because it's just the obvious thing. If we're making a decision, we're probably going to start with an if, no matter what the decision is. You know, should I should I have coffee with my breakfast this morning or should I have tea? Um, you know, well, if I have coffee, then this. If I have tea, then that. If I'm going to have coffee, I have to go grind the beans. If I'm going to make tea, I got to go uh, heat the water and get a tea bag. You know, whatever. Like, we don't even realize this is going on. But these Boolean loops are happening in our brains you know, mil- probably millions of times a day, constantly, nonstop. Everything is if, then, else, and, or. It's it's how we operate. Um, and it's certainly how computers, uh, you know, and, and, and well, it's not... That's the wrong way to put it. It's not that this is how computers operate, but it's for automation purposes of a bot. It's the way you need to think about decisions. Um, and you want to have fewer decisions. This is this actually came up in a, in a TRG session a few weeks back, is when you're designing a bot, you want to have fewer decisions, not more. You really want to try hard to avoid having a million different decision points because that's just too much complexity and it becomes really hard to troubleshoot if anything isn't behaving correctly. So when I make my bots now, I strip them down as far as I can. I make them absolutely dead simple and as few possible decision points to consider as I can. Um, Anytime I feel like I need to add another decision point, I really resist it. I really question, okay, do I actually have to have this? Is this really necessary or am I just missing something about my original decision? Because I really don't want to add another decision point. Um, so that's that's an important thing to consider is try to have fewer decision points, not more. All right. Thank you for that, Edward. Uh, and I don't see any additional questions coming in. So hopefully uh, you guys have understood kind of where I'm going with this. You get something out of it and I uh, would love to see more of you on the course. I know some of you are already joined up, especially the TRG folks. So thank you for that. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this. I am, as you probably have figured out, I'm a bit of a obsessed junkie for this stuff. I, I love automation. I love what can be done with it. Um, I'm a big Sierra chart fan. It took me a while to get there. I wasn't at first. I used to I used to really hate on Sierra chart in my early days because of the clunky, ugly interface. And, you know, eventually I got over that and I realized, you know what, I don't care about the interface is this gives me some raw tools that are really useful. So I'm just going to get used to the interface and learn it. And that's just how it is. Um, so in that regard, it's no different from Photoshop or After Effects or you know any tools I used to use back in my video production days that were also really, really, really hard to learn. Um, but once I took the time to learn them and learn them well, all of a sudden I could produce whatever I could imagine, whatever I wanted, uh, and you know was able to have a, a career out of that. So. That is it for the presentation. Uh, if there are any additional questions, by all means, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, if by chance there was anything anyone wanted to talk about, you could certainly let me know. I can I can unmute anybody if they want to talk, but uh, usually people just want to stick to the chat, so I'm assuming that. But failing any additional questions, I think we can leave it there. 
Uh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, I, I wanted to try to keep this tight. It could easily run all day because uh, I could talk about this stuff all day. So uh, reminder, this is the early bird is through December 18th. Um, so you've got uh, where are we at? We're December 2nd now or something like that. So you got a couple of weeks uh, to decide to grab the, the discount and it will be starting in January. So we'll uh, once we'll let the new year get out of the way. Everybody's holiday debauchery get out of the way. And uh, then we will begin in earnest. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, oh, Edward, great. Another question. Uh, Axel C++ is what you use to build a custom indicator, which you can then use or plug into a bot framework. Absolutely. Yes. And in fact, I do exactly that. I have some custom studies that I have now built uh, to do various things like you know, dynamic position sizing, uh, some certain replay controls, um, calculate expectancy for me, all these kinds of things. And yeah, I've built my own studies to do that. And I can just hook them in to the framework. And then presto, they're good to go. Um, it takes me no time at all. Now that I have this framework... I can have, I can, I can, you know, have some crazy idea in the shower or, you know, you wake up in a cold sweat and you're like, oh my God, I wonder if there's an edge to some such thing, or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one who does that, but <laughs> it happens to me a lot. Um, I can come running in here and I can throw it together in, yeah, okay. If it's an order flow involved, it might be a little more complicated, but me, it might take me a half hour to an hour to, to take a, you know, an order flow idea that has a little more complexity to it and build it and turn it into a working bot that is now running and gathering data and telling me whether there's some some validity to it or not. Um, and uh, just having that kind of power, because I didn't you know, I didn't used to be able to do that at all. It used to be I would sit down with a spreadsheet, you know, and, and when I say used to be, I mean, you know, a year ago. Like the, the the bulk of this um, has come in the last year. I've really sort of leveled up my my automation skills big time in the last year. A year ago, I would sit down at a blank spreadsheet and it might take me a week to build a bot that did something that now I look at and I'm like, oh my God, seriously, this is, this is like 10 minutes. Like, what are you thinking? Uh, so yeah, um, you can definitely, if you know C++, you know Axel, you can totally build studies to help make things even even faster and more efficient and easier for you. Uh, Jose, how do I get your earlier class without having to sign up for membership? It is, inclu is it included with Library Pass? It is not. We have made the recordings available uh, kind of on a, on a request basis. They're not really public, um, but uh, Lee, maybe you and I should have a chat after this um, about making that more available to people because there are those who do know order flow. And, and let me back up a, a step here and make this clear. The previous class I did earlier this year was on building a specific order flow bot. If you don't know order flow at all, and I, I'm pretty sure you do, Jose, but you know, for those who don't, I would not recommend you start there. Um, although it was a great class and it's a, it's a good bot and all of that, but this is probably a much better place for you to start because introducing you to the concepts of automation and things like that, this is going to do a better job at that. That class had a pretty steep amount of assumptions about your level of experience and understanding already. That would probably be a, be a great follow-on to this. So that's maybe something we should talk about doing is, is you know, giving people a way to access that after this. And I'll talk with Lee about that. We'll we'll see about setting something like that up because I like the idea. Um, but uh, but for you, I believe you already have a pretty solid understanding of order flow. Because uh, I know you're you've been in Lee's recent um, the uh, the statistics class and everything like that. So, um, yeah, I think it, it probably makes a lot of sense, actually, as an add on uh, an optional add on to this class. Uh, so we'll we'll discuss that. But also, you know, you can DM me in the pit. I'm happy to, to talk with you privately about how we can make the recordings available as well. That's an option as well. We'll figure something out. But uh, thank you for the su suggestion. I think that's a, a good one. And we will we will discuss offline, as they say. And then we will circle back. Yes, we will. We will discuss offline and circle back. Ugh, yuck. Horrible terminology. Anywho, all right. Um, anything else? I will say a phrase we often say in uh, TRG, which is burning desires, which is basically this is your last chance. Any last thing, question, topic, uh, whatever. You just got to get off your chest. Got to say, got to ask before we go. Now's your chance. Throw it in the chat. Otherwise, we will go our separate ways. Enjoy the rest of our Saturday. Yeah, Edward, you're exactly right. A university semester course. That's precisely, even though I didn't go to college, that's precisely the model I have in my mind for this is, is that is that you nailed it. That's exactly right. And I'm trying to, you know, I, the, 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 the webinars that are just passively watch a webinar and listen and then come, you know, and, and do it the next week and do it the next week, whatever. I, I don't, I don't get much out of those and I don't feel that other people get a lot out of them and I don't want to do that. So this is really hands-on. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to expect you guys 
to do some work. And, you know, it'll be work you'll enjoy. It'll be to your own benefit. It'll be good. But it, you're going to be expected to go build your own bots. You'll be able to follow along. It'll be easy. It should be easy anyway. Um, but you will the process of discovery and learning that you will get out of doing the actual work yourself is priceless. I could just hand everybody the bot framework. Hell, I could hand you all six finished bots right now and just say, okay, great. We're done. Thanks for your money. Bye. But why? You're not going to get anything long-term out of that. I don't want to do that. I don't feel that that's beneficial to anyone. So there's no point. Yeah, exactly. You have to take this seriously. And that's what I love about TRG. TRG is such a studious place for serious students of the markets. And it's a it's a small, tight-knit community. So, you know, I think the majority of us have been around quite some time. Most of us stay kind of forever. Um, and, you know, we've become quite close, uh, but it's a very serious group. And uh, so if you're serious, if you take this seriously and you want to make this a real profession, I uh, strongly encourage you to come check out TRG. Uh, but definitely you know, check us out um, and would love to have any and all of you on the course. So I look forward to that. Thank you all for the questions. Appreciate it. I think we're probably good there. We will wrap there. Um, TRG folks, we'll see you tomorrow for the Sunday Reopen with Jeff. Until next time, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your weekend. Ta-ta.